Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 31st, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories, you can see the United States is out of control. Canada still grows day by day into day 19. The reported cases per million population, Italy, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. You can see we are actually roughly following the same trajectory as Germany and Italy. Here are the percentage of deaths. Italy was the high at 11.75%. Germany low at 1.08% and Canada at 1.17%. Put this in perspective, you have 100 people who get COVID-19, 11.75% of them or about 12 of them will die in Italy versus one in Canada and Germany. Here are the actual numbers of deaths. Italy 837 today, Spain 748, Germany 130, and you can see France had gone up, United Kingdom has gone up, United States has gone up, and Canada is kind of level at 12. Here are the deaths per million. You can see Canada, day 19, is roughly uh, close to the United States and Germany, whereas Italy, Spain, France, United Kingdom are above us. We'll now calculate the reproductive number, looking at the number of new cases over the number of existing cases. We'll look at the last week from March 24th to March 31st, and there are the cases. Calculate the number. It's the number of new cases over the number of existing cases, and the reproductive number is 2.08. The reproductive number over a one-week period remains above one, meaning the number of cases continues to grow each day over the last week. The estimated values in the other countries, Italy, Italy crossed one, so that means their cases are still growing, but just not as uh, fast. Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States is above everybody, and Canada. Now don't forget, we're about 10 days behind the United States and about 20 days behind Italy. But at this point in time, day 18, we're actually below all of the other countries. This is the number of new cases per day. And this is what you'd expect to see. The reproductive number in Italy has fallen. So Italy, the cases have obviously flattened out. And are, each, each day we'll see less and less new cases, we hope, in Italy. This is Spain. Germany. France. United Kingdom. United States is still growing very fast. And Canada. Here are the number of new cases per day in Canada. We had 1,164 today, 1,168 yesterday. I'm a little bit concerned about this just because on Monday, sometimes we get cases that weren't reported on Sundays dumped in. So we certainly had a whole lot today. Hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll see a little bit of a drop. Here's South Korea versus Canada and daily new cases. And this is Canada over 18 days. And this is South Korea, the same time period. And you can see we're actually going in the wrong direction. South Korea was dropping significantly by this time, and we're going in the wrong way. Here are the trajectories of the countries from John Byrne Murdoch at the Financial Times. You can see that uh, the countries Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, and Korea are tracking here. And the rest of the countries are tracking in this uh, big red oval. Someone had postulated that the countries here, all the citizens wear masks. And here they do not wear masks. And it's an interesting observation, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Here are the uh, coronavirus deaths. You see the United States is still on the steepest trajectory. And Canada is down here. South Korea and Japan have tailed off, as is Italy is also tailing off. Here's the subnational regions. You can see the United States in areas of New York, which is becoming the epicenter in the world of coronavirus now. Uh, Miami, uh, New Jersey, Louisiana, California, Florida, and Washington. So there's two general principles that we use when we treat cancer. The first is grading, and that's a process doctors use to determine how fast their cancer will grow or spread. Um, and it, the cancers are usually deemed either aggressive or benign. And staging, that's the process that's used to determine how far a cancer is spread, whether it's local, regional, or distant. So let's think about this with SARS-CoV-2. Grading, well, how easy is it to catch SARS-CoV-2? Is it aggressive type of uh, virus or is it benign? And we, we know this from data from other countries and also data from the virus itself. And staging, but we need to determine how far it's spread, locally within our communities, regionally within our provinces, and distantly within our country. So if someone had cancer, would you be happy if we only knew if it was aggressive or not without knowing how far it had spread? That would not seem logical. So then I ask you, why are we okay doing this with SARS-CoV-2? We know how quickly it can spread, but we have no idea as to the true extent of the spread in Canada. How will we know SARS-CoV-2 is finally in remission if we don't know to what extent it has spread? 
So again, Canada, what do we need to do? Well, you need to write to your Prime Minister, your Premier, your Member of Provincial Parliament, or your Member of Parliament. Tell them it is of utmost urgency that we expand testing and isolation. And this is a shout out to uh, Peter Fragiscados, who is my Member of Parliament in London, Ontario. I'd like to thank him for actually emailing me today and telling me uh, that he understands how important, te how important testing is. Remember, folks, we've got to hold the line. We can't let that virus escape. Shout out again to Collins Clothiers, who's doing a great job supporting our local small businesses and frontline workers. You can get one of these really cool hoodies or t-shirts at collinsclothiers.com uh, under Canada Strong. Remember, folks, do your part, flatten the curve, stay home, stay safe, and most importantly, save lives.